Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. Today I have something really cool to show you, and it's right here, and we're gonna basically open this. Yes, this is a boxed Macintosh Performa 430. Yes, it's used, but there's a lot of goodies inside, like a monitor and the accessory box and a, a bunch of things. So I'm really excited to open this up. When I was scrolling through social media websites and looking for old computers, I saw the image of this box and it just made me stop my tracks. So we're gonna go to a different room where there's, well, more room to open this up, and then we'll take everything down here and take a closer look. So we have the Performa 430 here in its box. And I'm gonna open it up in a second. It has a lot of the stickers and everything on there still intact and it's a bit too heavy to bring down to the basement. So I'm just gonna open it up here and we'll go from there. Okay, so this was open before, but looks like there's still a lot of goodies in here. All right, so we have, oh boy, the keyboard and the mouse. Yeah, everything could use a good cleaning. An Apple keyboard too. Okay, and then we have your standard ADB mouse. And it looks like, let's see, a power cord and an ADB cord. Okay, I'll put that to the side. Wow, it has the star, well, most of the styrofoam. There's a few pieces fell off here. Wow, look at this. All right, let's put this aside. Okay, got these little foam squares. Put to the side. A Microsoft you know, page holder, one of the things you put on the side of the monitor to hold a page so you could type. Looks like there's Velcro on this side. I bet you there's Velcro on the monitor here. All right, let's see what's still in the accessories box. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out carefully. Oh, wow. Look at that. Global Village Communication Teleport Bronze modem for the Macintosh Performa, sealed. <laughs> That's really cool. That's awesome. We got a microphone too. Oh, just the box. It's empty. But that box is mint. Oh my goodness. That is cool. Let's see. Looks like there was a software disc in here at some point. Please complete and mail this registration card. I doubt anybody at Apple would care if I mailed this in. So I will not mail this in. Copyright 1992. Cool. Telephone warranty, support, information, blah, blah, blah. This is all really cool. It's cool to see this stuff like new. You know, usually it's all crumpled. Packing list for Style Writer 2. So they must have ordered a printer at one point. Oh, and here are the discs. Application questions. Read me. I love that. That's really cool. The little icon there. So let's see. One, two, three, four. Yep. All well, the discs are here. All right. So that's enough for this box. Look at those labels on it. That is so cool. Software already installed. The barcode there. I think with the serial number. Claris works. All right, now let's take out the monitor. Okay, let's put this to the side. Okay, and here we have the bundled Apple Performa display. You don't see that every day. That is really cool. All right, let's take this monitor out. has the original styrofoam in here. OK, 
carefully take this styrofoam off. Alright, so this little page holder attaches to either side. Now, that's weird. This monitor does not have an Apple logo on it. That is so strange. Is it an Apple display? Should be. Yep, Apple Performa display. So now that everything is unboxed, let's focus on the computer. Unfortunately, this Performa does not work. And I knew that when I purchased this, and it's pretty clear to see why. Here's the culprit here. This battery, which has just exploded and leaked. Oh, jeez. Oh my goodness. Next to the PDS slot, I think, is the worst. Look at that. I don't think this is fixable. If it is, it's gonna probably not be worth it. I mean, jeez. I would not even know where to begin on this one. But at least the back looks pretty clean. Well, that's the bad news, but the good news is that everything else looks pretty good. Even the outside of the computer seems fine. So let's take a look at the history of this Performa to learn a bit more about what we have here. These particular computers were simply rebranded Macintosh LC2 and LC3 machines that Apple had already previously sold. However, these were more consumer-friendly versions because they came bundled with a monitor, popular software, and sometimes a modem and other accessories. This made it easy to just buy a computer in one big box and come home with everything that you needed. This was pretty much the ideal bundle for a first-time computer owner. The Macintosh Performa 430 and its siblings the 405 and the 450 were released in April of 1993. These models continued to be sold until November of that year when they were replaced by similar offerings. The Performa 405 and 430 models are based after the Macintosh LC2, which came out a year earlier. They are identical except for the hard drive size provided, with the 430 model having the larger drive. The Performa 450 model featured a faster 25 MHz processor from the Macintosh LC3. It also featured more memory and shipped with a slightly better monitor. So how much faster was the 450? Well, quite significant actually. The LC and LC2 and the Performa 405 and 430 suffered from having a 32-bit CPU but with only a 16-bit data bus. In addition, their memory was limited to a maximum of only 10 megabytes. The LC3, or Performa 450, resolved both of these issues, but of course came at a higher price. The Performa 405 sold for $1,349 US dollars. The Performa 430, the model that I have here, sold for $1,499 US dollars. And the Performa 450 sold for $1,899 US dollars. So even though the Macintosh LC2 model at this point was over a year old, the Performa series based after it was still a good value. Sure, you could go and buy an LC2 in the spring of 1993 for about $1,000, but that didn't include a monitor or any other of the bundled items that the Performa came with. Remember, color monitors at this time still cost several hundred dollars. Apple's own Performa and Performa Plus monitors cost about $300 to $400 respectively. So if we look at an LC2, which was actually still being sold in 1993 by some retailers, one of the popular bundles was for a model that cost $1,400 US dollars that came with a monitor. These ads don't really specify the brand of the monitor or the size, but let's just assume it's a decent one. At a quick glance, you may think, oh, I could save $100 here. But the LC2 bundle does not include the modem or any software bundles that the Performa has. When you add these up, it's clear to see that in most cases, the Performa was the better deal. So now that we've seen what's in the box and learned why this may be a good first computer, this is where I'd usually show the machine up and running. Except, well, ours is dead. However, I'd like to show you what's left of the computer, and then since I have a working Macintosh LC2, 
which is identical to this performer model, we'll be taking a look at that instead. At first, I thought the battery damage was only isolated to the battery holder area, the ROMs, and the PDS slot. However, after trying to remove the hard drive, I came across the horrible realization of just how bad things were. I did try to use the hard drive in another system, but it wouldn't work. I even tried swapping the boards, and unfortunately no such luck. I'm unsure if the hard drive died years ago of old age, or if it was just something wrong with it due to this battery exploding. The residue on this board likely didn't help either. To make matters worse, not even the lid emerged unscathed from the battery's explosion. Just another reason why you should remove old batteries from your computers. Look at that, it's just destroyed the metal here. I, I, it got all the way to the floppy disk drive too. I mean, this is just nasty and I really feel sorry for this poor little machine. When compared to the hard drive, the floppy drive looks like it's in much better condition. In fact, there's a disk in here too. Ah, okay, that's the utilities disk. This is what was missing from that cardboard disk sleeve earlier in the video. So let's compare the Performa 430 with our working LC2. As you can see, this is what an LC2 is supposed to look like inside. Here's where the battery holder is, and here's where the PDS slot is supposed to, well, look like a PDS slot. As you can see here, the machines are identical on the inside. So let's set up our LC2 so we could take it for a spin and see what a Mac from this era could do. We'll be using an LCD monitor just because it's easier to record with my camera. Also, we'll be using a SCSI 2SD adapter so we don't have to rely on an old hard drive. Sometimes this thing slows down a little bit since my model is the older 5.1 version, but we should be okay. We're running System 7.5 on this machine, although we could run all the way up to 7.6.1. As you can see, the system boots up fine. We have 8 megabytes of memory installed, which is added to the 2 megabytes of built-in memory. While it's not a lot of memory, it's plenty to run software like WordPerfect. Here we could work on a document and print things out if we wanted to. We could even play some educational games like Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing. Or even sample some less educational titles like Lemmings. This is a little bit of an odd one. It's this little leprechaun game I used to play as a kid. I originally found this game on a shareware disc back in the day. It's quite an interesting little title, although some of the later levels can be quite difficult. Or you can be creative and let your inner artist out with a drawing program like Easy Color Paint. We had this application on the family's Macintosh 2CX computer growing up. It was probably the first digital paint software I ever used. I couldn't seem to find this version of the software anywhere online. So I ended up purchasing it on eBay, but don't worry, I'll be archiving it and putting it on the Macintosh Garden website sometime soon. I was even able to open some of my old drawing files from my old computer. Unfortunately, some of them have become corrupted over the years. If we need to get online, we could use the bundled external dial-up modem. Or if we're bleeding edge, we can use an add-on Ethernet card and connect to our local area network. Once we're plugged in, it's easy to connect to the... Oh boy. Ah, the joys of working with old computers. Okay, where were we? Ah, that's right. Once everything's correctly set up and installed, then we're ready to connect to other computers on the network. If you don't have an Ethernet card, you can connect to an Apple Talk network via a local talk cable. If you have an adapter like this Asante Talk one, you can actually bridge your local talk connection to a standard Ethernet network. This particular adapter won't allow you to go online, but it will allow you to transfer files and share printers. Sure, it's not as fast as Ethernet, but it's better than nothing. But back in the day, if you did have a dial-up modem, you could use that to get online and use your standard array of internet applications that were available at the time. Although apparently some people didn't care for the bundled modem. I found it hilarious that someone online actually hated this bundled modem so much 
that they made a hate webpage all about it. And that page is still online today. Some of the comments on this page are great. I, I wonder what type of modem this guy uses today. Anyway, although this computer only has a built-in floppy disk drive, it was actually quite expandable. You could connect a CD-ROM drive or an external storage device like a zip drive via the 25-pin SCSI port on the back. This series of computers was also designed with schools in mind, and therefore Apple designed a special add-on card just for this market. Apple knew that most schools had heavily invested in their Apple II line of computers years earlier. Because of this, they offered a unique solution to take advantage of their existing Apple II software library. This Apple II eCard was basically an Apple II e computer, but shrunken down to a tiny board. This snaps into your Performa or LC computer and allowed you to run most Apple II software right on your Mac. As you can imagine, this was a very popular add-on for schools and those who still needed to run their Apple II programs. Third-party companies also came out with additional add-on cards for these machines, such as this Ethernet networking card by Farallon, this math coprocessor by Applied Engineering, and this CPU accelerator card, which looks like it also has a math coprocessor on it as well. So, although the Performa only has one card slot, it's quite expandable both inside and out, especially for a budget machine. So all in all, the Performa 430 was a decent computer, especially for the first-time computer owner. It put the simplicity of the Macintosh within your reach at a price that wouldn't completely break the bank. Plus, it came with everything you needed, great software, a bundled color monitor, and even a dial-up modem. The Performa series continued throughout the late 1990s and offered home users and educators an affordable and flexible Macintosh experience. During this time, new models introduced new features such as built-in monitors, CD-ROM drives, audio-visual and TV tuner functionality, and eventually even included super-quick PowerPC processors. But Apple's consumer line of computers known as the Performa would quietly disappear from existence in early 1997. By that time, Apple was focused on its next big product, the iMac. It's not difficult to see the connection between these two systems. They were both designed with simplicity in mind and aimed toward a target audience of a first-time computer owner, a student, or an educator. So although the Performa 430 wasn't working, at least I have a nice monitor and some accessories to add to my collection. So it just goes to show you, you never really know what type of a condition a computer is in when you find a listing online, whether it's local or on eBay. Always try and ask the seller some questions and try and get some photos of the inside. That way you're not disappointed when you bring it home, especially if you pay a lot of money for it. So that's really about it for this video. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider clicking that little subscribe button at the top and make sure you hit that bell icon as well. That'll make sure you're notified when I release any new videos or when I do live streams and things like that. As always, you can keep tabs on me between videos when I'm on Twitter or I'm on Instagram. So you can follow me with my handle Mac84TV and see what I'm up to from day to day. If you want to support this channel, you could do it via Patreon. I thank you very much to my Patreon patrons, uh, supporters. Uh, you guys are awesome, and it, it's really great because that uh, extra funds goes right into these videos and acquiring things like this or getting tools and gear and things like that. So that's awesome, and I really appreciate uh, all the subscribers and all my supporters here on this channel. So that's about it, and I guess I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.